Saturday sees our third game against London-based opposition this season. We've lost one, we've drawn one. Can this be the W? We face Brentford. This is the big back of the net match day preview. My name's Sam. My name's Tom. Welcome to the show. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel, by the way, Brentford fan maybe, uh, we've got a couple of things that we'd like you to do. Click that big like button. It's like a, it's a thumbs up, isn't it, basically? So yeah, click that, get out of more people. Really appreciate it. And then while you're there, just click the subscribe button. It's going to be loads of stuff. And if you are a Brentford fan, not only this, not only the reaction after the game, then you've got your away day review. Yeah. So much. So yeah, it's worth subscribing. So please do. Make sure you do. But Bournemouth, we are full of confidence, as are you bees maybe. Yeah, you did it on penalties, but we did it inside 90 minutes. We played Swansea and we got the job done in the end. Tom, how important was it to get the W? Because we just need a bit of momentum. And also what's quite nice is that Iriola played a few first teamers as well. So this is going to be good going into Saturday's game where hopefully we can hit the ground running. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, it proved how important it was to get the win with the subs at half time. We were we were behind, not playing well. Um, and he brought on the big guns, didn't he? He brought on Dom Solanke. He didn't, didn't take any time to do that, really. So it obviously showed that, one, he wanted to just win a game, have a cup run. But also I think he thought we, we need to win this really just to kick us on a little bit and for him personally this is obviously his first win mm. competitively for us so yeah it was a, probably a big moment and I think it was nice to end the game the way we did because the first 45 was really bad but second half you know there's a lot of good things to hopefully take into the weekend mate. How do you like the Premier League adrenaline trading card game? You've heard of it right? You must have. Look look what we got. Mm. We got loads of these trading cards. Tons of them. We've got them coming out of our paws. And what we're going to be doing is giving some away to you. So in like each pack's a quid. Look, should we do it at the end of the show? Right. Whereby we'll take a look at the predictions in the comments and then we will choose one that got it right yeah. and we'll give away, say what, 10, yeah. 10 packs to a lucky winner. We'll also do another giveaway on Twitter as well. But our friends at Panini have, uh, have given these to us to give away. And yeah, are you the goat of swaps? Maybe you are. You know what, mate? I haven't done Panini in ages, oh, no. but I'm tempted to start doing it. I wonder if any of these packs have got any Bournemouth players. I know, I kind of want to see, but I can't. I want to I'm going to give it away to you, lucky luck. I want to open I might nick one. Yeah, may, may, may have to do that. Right, should we find out what happened last time at the Brentford Community Stadium? Yeah? Yeah? Uh, press play. There was a pull in the box. And a penalty's been awarded at Brentford. <laughs> Ivan Tony and Sinesi holding each other. There is, there is, there is, there is. Let's go! Tell me that wasn't obvious. Tell me that wasn't obvious. Jack Stacey assist, I think. Play that on for Stupid. Just a bit of hit on the brakes. Really easy for him. Yeah, so look, it, it wasn't great. It was, you know, what, nice to go to the stadium for the first time. Of course, we it's not the first time Bournemouth have played there. We played there when there were fans in, but just Brentford fans in a game that we also lost by two goals. This was a 2-0 defeat in an evening kickoff, and it was one that didn't come without its controversies. But what Premier League game is complete without saying that? Anyway, this time... It was a clash between Ivan Tony and Senesi getting caught up with each other. Turns out, in hindsight, when Howard Webb was reviewing the situation on Monday Night Football, that really the goal shouldn't have been allowed to stand. Because it was a penalty that was given, wasn't it? But the foul should have been awarded before it got to that point. Alas, even with the benefit of VAR, it carried on. They gave the pen. Ivan Tony scored. And I think uh, Matthias Jensen then made it 2 0 later on. It's frustrating, wasn't it? They've got our number a little bit, Brentford, I think. Yeah, probably right. I don't think we we weren't in a great place at that time. And I think, remembering the game, I think they did deserve to win. Yes. And obviously got another goal later on, as you said. But it was frustrating because you 
you know, when you're not playing very well, I remember us, we were keeping ourselves in the game and then a decision goes against you and you're suddenly one down. And the way we were playing at the time, it didn't, we didn't feel like we could go and get two mm. um, and keep the, the door closed. So, yeah, they comfortably beat us and they had a good season, didn't they? Got some really good players. And, um, yeah, we, we've struggled against them of late. Like you say, even in the championship, they when they went up, it was they beat us in the um, semi-final, didn't they, the playoffs. So, yeah, we've, we've struggled with them of late, I think, even in the home game against them, I think we could have got a penalty in that game yeah. last season. It was a nil-nil draw, wasn't it? And I, that shows the way it's gone because I remember thinking that's a decent point and that was at home to Brentford. So credit to Brentford, really. They're doing really well and they're one of the teams, along with Brighton probably, that sides like ourselves are looking at of kind of, you know, seeing if we can get that project going to be kind of like what they're doing because no one talks about them going down, really. Yeah. Um, and that's without their, their main man as well. So, yeah, credit to them. So far this season, Bournemouth have played teams that have been unbeaten. We played West Ham, Liverpool unbeaten, Spurs unbeaten, Brentford unbeaten. Mm -hmm. How's it going to pan out? This is the league table at the moment, as you can see it. Myself and Tom, I think at the start of the season, we, we gave our predictions and we thought an Ivan tony bees may struggle, but... Judging by the first few games of the season, and also the win in the EFL Cup, yes, it was on spot kicks. But look, they're ninth at the moment. Scroll down, and there we are in 16th. It is important that we get our first win of the season. If you're travelling there, make sure you get there safely. No trains, Tom. Mm, sure. Weird that. Funny that. Can you just say, right, how many times have we done a preview to a game in London, and you've said to me, oh, no train every time, and then you wonder why I don't like London. I hate it. It's yeah, always absolutely. aggro. I swear there's some sort of train issue strike yeah. every time I go to London. Yeah. Does but matter. The weather's going to be all right. There's going to be no to rain. Get a bit of sun. 20 degrees. It's 90 minutes to drive to Richmond. Uh, tubes are running okay. So a lot of people tend to park on the outskirts of London. Tube it in. One thing you must be aware of, the uh, the ULE zone, the ultra low emission zone has been increased. The footprint's been expanded, I think, August the 29th. So if you usually have your spot to park, which was previously outside it, probably this time it'll be inside it. Check your reg plate on their website because uh, it's £12.50 to, it's mad, isn't it? If you've got a, a car that doesn't comply with certain criteria. I wonder, I'm glad you said what that, I, I was just about to ask you what does you let stand for, but you've done it anyway, thank you yeah. for that. I'll never forget that, I forgot already. For you, Tom. Um, so yeah, as Tom said, there's fan cams, mm. there's the match day vlog, there's a second look, a Premier League show, but also, as Tom alluded to, the away day review show. Now, we did pick up a few Brentford uh, fans on our channel who subscribe, but it's going to be different. It's not going to be the same as before. Might not even be the same pub, because we're looking at different pubs this time as well. So really interested to get to get a taste mm. of what it's like. And also a 3 p.m. kickoff as well. So that's going to be nice to yeah, see. It was half five last time. Yeah, it was half yeah, five. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So yeah, let's check out Brentford uh, this season then, Tom. All started mm. with a really, good really game. good entertaining draw against Spurs. Yeah, I remember watching it. It was on Sunday, wasn't it? And um, as you say, I think it's quite easy for us to talk about because we've just played Tottenham. And there's a lot of good hype around Tottenham at the moment because of the way they play. And we saw that, um, you know, up close last week. So for Brent, for them to go to Brentford, and I remember the game and didn't think Brentford weren't worthy of that point. They could have won the game. So that shows where Brentford are at. And then going to Fulham and absolutely yeah. smashing them 3-0. So, yeah, they look really good. They probably should have beaten Palace. I think they'll look at that one and go, should have won that game. I think, um, I think it was Anderson, the defender for Palace, like a scammy goal. Um, and then, yeah, like you say, they, they obviously, similar to, our, to ourselves, really struggled a bit in Wales, but got the job done. Um, I think Newport missed every penalty. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they managed to get through it, mate. But, yeah, they're, as you can see, we haven't, if you were the, if you're a betting man, that's not meant any sort of thing because we're playing Brentford. But um, you would look <laughs> at it and go, Brentford haven't lost, Bournemouth haven't won, mm. should be a home banker. But... For some reason with, with Brentford, you, you look at them and always feel like you could have a chance, but yeah. they function really well. I've seen that this season, even without their star man. I think they've got some really good players still and not the most likeable from the outside, but I think Thomas Frank is a, a top gaffer as well and he's, he's proven that. Brentford fans have had, barely had to travel at all this season in the league. Well, they didn't. I mean, Fulham oh, just yeah. down the road and then two at home and now another one at home as well. But you mentioned Thomas Frank. We never like to do it, but we've got to pay tribute to him. That this is, this is his third season 
in the Premier League with Brentford. Of course, he joined the club in October 2018, so it's a sixth season at the club. But they, they've just steadily improved season on season. Last season, finished ninth on 56, uh, which is good considering we once finished ninth on 46 yeah. points. But uh, you know what? Everyone was looking at them at the start of the season. No Ivan Tony, thinking they're going to really struggle. A lot of fans probably... Um, would have said that they're a one-man team just because of the amount of goals he scores. But they are so not that, mate. And no. uh, they're in a really good place, Brentford, it seems. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I was definitely one of them. I think he even said it last season. that you, I think you you look at them sometimes and think, oh, maybe they'll, they've will they got a drop at some point. But there's no reason for that other than that they're called Brentford. They, mm. they, there's no reason why they should drop. They've got a really good coach, as I say. Yeah. They've got a good squad. And, um, yeah, they're proven that even without... Um, the goals are totally they can get goals from elsewhere they look they look really good mate I've been been impressed as mad isn't it how only three games and I think oh no they'll be fine and yeah. it's, it's, how, it's how quickly it changed but I think I was just I think it's understandable that a lot of people from the outside like say, say ourselves included for all oh, we're not sure yet how they'll do it without Tony but mm. I, I guess when you think about it they've had a a fair amount of time to prepare for this, so they, they would. It's not like it's come out of nowhere. No, it's it's very been true. so they they've obviously managed to you know sort out what they needed to, and they lost lost the goalkeeper as well. It was um, a decent goalkeeper who's obviously gone to Arsenal, and they've they've bought him Flecken, and and he looks pretty pretty decent as well. So they've made some good additions without being spectacular. Um, yeah, and I think they'll be absolutely fine, and they'll probably be looking for top half again to be honest. Yeah. So who else have they recruited during this uh, yeah. summer transfer window? Then, mate. Well, they got Nathan Collins from Wolves, who yeah. I was surprised at that move, but it shows really, you know, that a good Wolves centre half is wanting to go to Brentford. Mm. Um, he's good centre half, and then Sharda come in uh, permanently, and he he I, don't, I wouldn't say he's a totally replacement, but you saw I think he got his first goal against Palace, a really good goal. And you see that, oh, okay, they obviously, you know, there's high hopes for him yeah. up the top end of the pitch. So, yeah, and as I say, Flecken and then a few younger players. But they're just, they're quite steady and just bringing in a few players. They don't go mad. Um, and they kept most of their group together, as I say, apart from apart from Tony obviously missing for a period. So, yeah, they look good. And when is Romeo Beckham going to step up to the <laughs> first team then, mate, as well? I mean, yeah. Is that going to happen or not? He's still there, isn't he? He is, he is there. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he ever does do anything there. But, um, yeah, they did get him in. So, never know, he might be... I hope you end up doing like set pieces with him and stuff, you know, because yeah. we struggle from set pieces. So, you can imagine in training him, he's crossing balls in the Ben Mee and stuff just mm. for a laugh. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think we've beaten Brentford in every division we've played, apart from the Premier League, mm. so, which is which is frustrating. Hopefully, we because this is a fixture that's that's you know we've been around the block us yeah. two teams in the uh, nationwide League Division Three. Mm. The Ensley League Division Two, the N Power Champion. You know, look, we've we've been there throughout, uh, thick and thin, and we both our clubs have had their own kind of turmoil as well financially at times as well. So it is, it's probably f for the legacy Premier League fans of your Man Uniteds and your Liverpools, your big clubs. They'll hate this. Picture. They well, they must be probably the worst looking Premier League, uh, you know, twenty that we've you know, barring them. Obviously, you've got. Your Burnleys, you've got Brighton, who are, who are stereotypically a small yeah, club, Luton not so much now. now. Luton, Bournemouth, <clears> Brentford. <throat> it's not it's not quite your heady days of having like Sheffield Wednesday in Sunderland. Exactly. Well, I was just about to say, actually, you nearly took, um, took the words out of my mouth there because I was going to say this weekend, I believe, we're playing Brentford. Leeds are playing Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. And you know you're going to get, there's going to be a few tweets like, how's this a championship fixture and this one's a Premier League fixture because points are what get you promoted. <laughs> Us and Brentford deserve to be in the Premier League. We're much better football clubs than them too, and that yeah. is why currently. But yeah, it's, it's, it is weird because I still feel like I remember this fixture in the lower leagues, like you say. But um, really nice to see them doing how they're doing, to be honest. And, and as I mentioned earlier, it's it gives you hope that, OK, you know, you spend. it doesn't matter about the history. We can get up there as well. So mm -hmm. hopefully we do. But yeah, first and foremost, mate, really, really tough fixture for us. I don't think many teams, well, I don't think any team really go to Brentford and think, it's anything but a really difficult game. I think the majority of teams in the Premier League think if you can go to Brentford and get a point, that's a decent result, and, well, and that's credit to them. And there are lots of sides who, uh, who have, I mean, la last season Man United got absolutely spanked oh, there, and it, you know, it wasn't only them as well. And they've they've got the capability of doing that. Um, mm. They've beaten us as well. Our, our head to head record is is there to be seen, and it, yeah, it's fair to say in recent years they've sort of. We had a really good spell in the championship against them. Yeah, we? we did. They've been, they've been like, they've been better than us. They've yeah, been yeah. better than us. Um, yeah. Obviously, they beat us three-one in that home leg of their championship playoffs to then, then eventually get 
to the Premier League. Mm. They beat Swansea, didn't they, in the final? That's right. It? Yeah, Swansea. Yeah, that's right. Swansea, and, not that bad. And Mark Condes. Did he score? Uh, he won a penalty he against won, us. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember exactly. But yeah, um, we got him after that, didn't we? Yeah, we enough, did. Because um, yeah, he wasn't quite Premier League ready. But yeah, as I say, it felt like for a while they were always people, not mocked them, but they always said they always fall away. They're never going to get to the Premier League. They're getting the playoffs, just miss out, yeah. blah, blah. And then they finally did it. And now they're reaping the rewards. And uh, yeah, credit to them, as I say. So in all our league games against Brentford, uh, both of 1-9, drawn 19, lost 25. That's oh, really? quite bad, really. And, but overall, though, it's, uh, in all competitions, it's a bit more equal. 139, lost 42, drawn 33. So mm. in terms of the team news then... <clears throat> Bottom of the screen, there you can see what Andoni Iriola said at lunchtime. But we'll start with Brentford. Recently, we know that uh, Joshua De Silva, Baptista and Damsgaard, and also Strakosha as well. They've all been out injured, yeah. haven't they? Um, for us, we know what's happening. It's all down there. But mm. the good news is players are slowly coming back. Um, Lewis Cook, I thought, at Swansea in the second half when he came on, he, he did improve things a little bit. Yeah, and great. uh you know, maybe staked his claim actually for a starting berth in this team. Well, I don't know. Tom's going to be mm. predicting it a little bit later on as well. But I mean, the good news is I just can't wait for all these players to come back because right. then we can properly hit the ground running. And you never know with the transfer deadline day closing tonight, mm. maybe, Who maybe knows? cheeky. You know, there are murmurings you never know. of activity. There's not been any solid stories going on. No, I think we're, in a, we're probably in a position now where we signed a fair amount of players, but we're in a position now where it'll be one in, one out kind of got, thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then but there might be a bit at the end. You never know. It always goes a bit mad, doesn't it? But yeah, as you say, mate, and if, if there's Brentford fans watching that don't really know kind of what we're saying when we have got when we get these players back, but a few of our new signings, so in key areas, so Tyler Adams and Alex Scott, we've signed them, but then they're, they're not fit. And then we're also without Marcus Tavernier, Dango Watara, so some really key players there, fullbacks as well with Fredericks and Smith and stuff. So yeah, we could do with a few of them coming back and it feels like most of them will start coming back after the international break. So it's weird, but it's the first time we probably need that break. Yeah. Um, then we get a few bodies bodies back. So yeah, it, it'll be nice to get a few of them back, mate, but we're, we're ticking along okay. Like I said, we haven't, we haven't won, but I think the performances are, are slowly coming together. And as you say, when we get a few bodies back, I think we'll, we'll be absolutely fine. Have they got any um, star men that you think we should maybe look out for? I mean, their team's littered with it. I think their kind of their strength is actually their togetherness, and yeah, like, as a team, they are brilliant. But they have got some talent, haven't they? They have. Uh, Brian and Buemo seems to have really kicked on. I think a lot of people thought that that with Tony out, you know, could he really step up? And it looks like he has. Um, Six goals, has lost six Prem games, yeah. I believe. So, yeah, he's, he's, he started this season really well as well. He can play off that right side, he can play through in the middle. He's got a lot of pace. So, he'll, he'll be someone to watch out for. And as we mentioned earlier, Sharda, who's um, very highly rated. So, I think he's just starting to kick in now, as I say, got his first goal. So, yeah, they've got a few at the top end of the pitch to, to worry about. And they're, they're just quite an organised side, mate. Mm. So, yeah, they're... They're, like you say, they work function really well as a team. So, yeah, they'll be a tough nut to crack for sure. And pace in their front line is, is mm. something that might dictate what Andoni Oriola will Maybe. do. Perhaps we'll find out. Do you want to know who the referee is? I normally say no, so I'm just going to stick with no. OK. It's Bobby Madley. Oh, and he's the dog's bollocks, to be fair. He is the dog's bollocks. <laughs> um, we don't want to be making any comments about him because that would be rough. Um, but he, he had a few years out of the game, didn't he? Um, he did, yeah. You're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, with yeah some he was played, well played. Um, but yeah, he had a few years out of the that game. That was poor. Yeah, poor. <laughs> after his refereeing duties were removed from him after a video incident, for the last time we had him for a game, mm. and they were both away. 2017-18 season, West Brom and Spurs. So Spurs would have been a loss. Yeah, West, West Brom might 17... have been a win. Was that Adam? Smith? Was that the Adam Smith two one? 17-18. Was that when Adam Smith, Charlie Daniels scored a last minute penalty? Yeah, maybe? that was 2-1. I'm trying to think if that was 17-18. We definitely beat him there 2-1. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. But we also had that one where we uh, lost 1-0, Hagazi header. Yeah. And I'm debating if it's that, but oh, that's that's I can't bother to look. But yeah, um, either way, we definitely would have not won the Spurs game. So, But yeah, I'm sure he'll have a poor awesome game. Um, right, let's go for the Brentford team because they're... I want to do something about wags and wagging tails. No, it's, it's gone. It's gone. Right. Looks like formation-wise, they're in a sort of 
4-3-3 Yeah, you? pretty much, mate. And I think their team at the moment uh, kind of picks itself because of the way they're playing and, and the players they've got available. Obviously, Flecken will be in goal. Um, new signing, started okay. Back four, I mean, Ben Mee's struggling to get in the side at the moment, um, which is interesting. I thought he would play more, but they're, they're looking good. Hickey at right back, go Collins and Pinnock at centre-halves with Rico Henry at left back. Uh, the midfield looks pretty strong. Uh, Jensen, Norgard and Jan out. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, the, the front three are, are so fluid, they can kind of play in any of them three positions. Um, I'll probably reckon they'll go and Wemmer off the right, Shard off the left with Visser through the middle, but they can alternate as alternate, sorry, as well. Um, I know they gave a few chances to people like Lewis Potter and that in the week, but I think they'll revert back to this, tried and tested. And um, yeah, I think it, I've got a feeling they'll get that bang on. In the car on the way to Swansea, I think we were talking about uh, Sharda. Oh, yeah. and, I, and I asked, you know, what, how's his name spelled? And I thought it might be the name of the, the yeah. musical artist of the 90s and noughties. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, is he a smooth operator? And Steve, Steve didn't laugh at all. Turned out that they were doing those same puns on Match of the Day. Yeah, they were. I, I, which I did not realise. Yeah, right then. No, I didn't. Just nick your copy No, I didn't realise. Just saying. Let's yeah. do Bournemouth, come on. Oh, yeah. Four, two, three, one. then. Yep. Uh, right, OK, let's, let's start from the back. Uh, yeah, Neto, well, obviously Rado in goal, he hasn't lost the game. Um, no, we'll go Neto in goal, obviously, he'll come back in. Um, what, where was Randolph in the week, by the way? <laughs> We've got Randolph, he didn't even make the bench. Um, yeah, back four is harder than you would have thought, maybe. I think Aaron's will obviously be at right back. Zabani uh, will play as a centre-half, I think, with Sinesi. And I'm going to go Kirk as a left-back. Uh, midfield, I'm going to make a change, though. Okay. Oh, I've got a feeling Lewis Cook might get the nod ahead Ooh, of Rothwell for okay. this one. Nothing really against Rothwell, I just think, I wonder if he'll try Cookie in this one. I think just to come on. Yeah, bit deeper. Yeah, yeah, I think he'll play with, with Ben in a little bit more retreated as well. Um, with Christy kind of in front of him. Semenyo off the right. Goal, the yeah, way. brilliant. Buzzing for him to get his goal. I was saying to you on our WhatsApp group, he's a player that, like, even when he starts a game, he looks like he's just like done a cross country. Because yeah. every run is lung busting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> he looks like he's knackered, but yeah. he, he does keeps it going, throughout the game and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, I think he'll definitely play in that role. Semenyo didn't even have any minutes, so he'll come back in on the right, I'm sure. I think he's going to go Anthony um, ahead of Cliver, uh, just because I think I mentioned it in a previous video, but just because I think that you get the best out of Kirkes when Anthony's there, I think his link-up plays better, and I think Cliver's making more of an impact off the bench at the moment. Um, and obviously, Dom Solanke will be leading the line, mate. So, yeah, I'm confident with them too, but as I say, there's a, there's a few um, changes that could be made for sure. What is your prediction? There's a reason why you shouldn't just watch this video and just go, oh, you know what, they're asking for, for predictions now, I don't care. Because of these oh, bad boys! Loads of them. These official trading card game cards, Adrenaline XL, the Premier League from Panini, are you the goat of swaps? Well, look, we're going to give away mm, 10. We're going to give away lovely. 10 packs, right? So whoever gets it right... Uh, the scoreline, then we'll pick one at random, then uh, we'll get in touch with you, or we may just ask you to send us an email, and then we'll get those to you. We'll also run one on Twitter as well, a sort of a follow and retweet account as well. Uh, and hopefully, you'll get a few Bournemouth players. If you're a Brentford fan, you might get a few Brentford players as well. So yeah, we look forward to giving some of those away to you. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. What's your uh, prediction anyway, mate? Yeah, I do, I've got a feeling we're going to get our first points of the season, mate. Yeah. Three points of the season, Jeez. I'm talking. I actually believe that we will not come away from the Brentford Community Stadium empty-handed. I do feel like this could be a W. I honestly do. And I've got, I don't know, I've just got a funny feeling about it. I think 2-1 Bournemouth. It's on. Someone didn't drive to Swansea in the week and had a few drinks, didn't you, Savvy? <laughs> um, you're still feeling very positive after that. Um, I know what you mean, though. For some reason, I've got this weird feeling we're going to get something. Um, just because I it's feel like... because we are. Yeah, maybe. because we are. Just because I feel like we haven't been playing that bad. We've had really tough fixtures. Maybe we'll... Yeah, I'll, I'll go one all. Um, I still think they're a, they're a good side and I still think it'll be difficult. But um, yeah, I, feel, I think we might nick a point. So yeah, I'll go for a 1-1 one -one draw as um, Solanke to, to nick a goal. But yeah, I do, I do think... We'll struggle to keep the door closed. They're a good side. But hopefully we nick something there, yeah. Hopefully we can. Right, thank you so much for watching. Look forward to, to seeing you at the pub, at the ground, on fan cams, or whenever. Don't feel shy. Come and say hi. I'm a poet, all that kind of stuff. See you in the ground. Other chairs. Up chairs. Come on. That was good. Did you rehearse that? No, I didn't. Well, that was very good. <laughs>